Now let us start our discussion with the next data structure which is linked list. Now if I talk about the importance, linked lists are fundamental data structure like array and also in future we are going to utilize this concept of linked list with other data structure as well. Now here I have used the term fundamental. What I mean by that? So fundamental basically means that we are going to utilize the similar concept that this is a base concept and we are going to utilize the same concept to develop or to work with any other data structure. So if I talk about the previous example that is array, we are going to utilize the concept of array to work with stack and queue in future. So that means array is going to be really important. Similarly, linked list are also important. Now let's move forward and discuss why we are going to study what is linked list and all the other complexities. So the first thing is linked list are different than arrays in terms of storing value. So if I discuss about array, so let me take a quick example. Let me take a variable vook and I'm going to take value as 256. Remember when we work with array, we are going to store all values in a particular sequence with memory canvas. So if I talk about these three values that is 2, 5 and 6. So suppose if I store my first value to add maybe 601. So I'm going to consider these four slot. Then the next value will be just after my 2. So this is 2. This is going to be my 5 and this is going to be my 6. Now this is the condition of array that means they are in a sequence in memory canvas. But if I talk about linked list, this case can be different. If I take these three values same, so if I have this 2, 5 and 6 and if I'm using the concept of linked list, I can store 2 here and then maybe I can store 5 here and then I can store the value of 6 here and this is possible actually. So that means when we are using array. We have a particular sequence. We know that if we have first value at maybe position of 601, the next value will be at plus 4 if we are using 32 bit system. So if I have first value as 601, I know that my second value will be at 605. My next value will be at 609 because they are in sequence. But if I talk about linked list, this is not going to be the case. Maybe I have stored my first value here. The next value can be anywhere on my memory canvas. It can be here. The next value can be anywhere. So it can be here. So here I'm storing two, here I'm storing five, here I'm going to store six. So this is the major difference if I talk about linked list. It is going to be a bit more complicated. I have tried to just give you a brief idea in layman's term, but it will be a bit different. So that will be the major difference that you have to understand. If someone asks you what is the difference between array and linked list, it will be how the values are stored in memory canvas. Now let me clear this up and then jump onto our linked list again. Now let's move forward and take a quick example about linked list so we can understand it better. So let me take a quick example with a value of 3, 7, 2 and 9. So here we have 3, then we are going to have 7, then 2 and then 9. Now here I'm taking the minimal representation of how we are going to represent a linked list. Now suppose if I'm working with this example, I'm going to have few important things. The first one is how we are going to represent linked list. So it can be about representation. And the second one is what type of linked list we are working. So it will be about its type. Now linked list are represented with the help of node. Now if you talk about array, what we do is we simply have a memory and we simply stored elements one after the other. So they are directly connected with each other. But that's not the case with linked list. The second thing is array usually have index position like 0, 1, 2 and we don't have any index position for linked list. So that is going to be the major difference and these two information is going to be really helpful for us. So let's talk about the representation of a linked list. So if I take this particular example and represent in the form of a proper linked list, it is going to look something like this. So this is our current linked list and we have just evolved all these values. So here we have value of 3, then 7, then 2 and then 9. So we have all these four values but it is represented like this. And now you might be asking what is this head, what is this, what is this structure. So let's talk about each and everything. So the first thing is 
if you talk about the name the term itself linked list so that means there are list of elements that are linked somehow and that somehow is because of this pointer so let first talk about this node and this pointer so each element that we take in a linked list is converted into a node so what a node is node is basically our structure that is going to store our value that is 3 and also it is going to store the value of the next data that we are going to refer so that means each data that we are going to play is first going to convert into node so if i am talking about this 3 i am going to convert it into a node now this node is going to have the value that is 3 and then it is also going to store the value of next pointer that is next element so here i am going to store 7 now this particular point is known as data for this particular node and this particular point is going to refer as next. So if I'm referring this particular node as three, if I say what is three dot next, it is going to be seven. So each element first converted into a node. So here you can see three is converted into node, seven is converted into node and following all the elements. So this is the part of node. Now the next thing is, what is this head? So the first element in our link list is known as head. The last element is known as tail. Now some people also refer first element as start and which is basically fine. If you are ever solving a problem and see start or head, both are same. The next thing is what is this none? So if you talk about the flow of linked list, it is going from left to right. So we start from three, the next element is going to be seven. We know about this information that is three dot next. Now I am at seven. Now seven is going to have the next element as two, okay. I am at 2, the next element 2 is going to refer is 9, ok, I am at 9. Now this is the last element we know, this is tail. So if this is last node, how we are going to demonstrate that? So we are not going to have any next, that means it is going to refer to none. So that is the basic structure of a linked list. We are going to have node for each element and then we are going to connect them with the help of this pointer. And what is this pointer at this point of time? It is dot next. Now if I jump back here again to understand my memory canvas. So this is my three. Let me remove this and try to draw our current structure. So I'm going to take this three. Okay, this is my first node. This is going to be my data. And then here I am going to store the next pointer. So which is going to refer to seven. Okay, I have my seven. And then here I'm going to store the next pointer, which is going to be two. Now. This is the data and this is going to be the next pointer, which is nine. Now this is the end. That means we don't have anything further. So what I'm going to refer is none. That means here I'm going to store the data and here I'm going to store or refer to the address of seven. Now because of this particular powerful point, we can store any value at any position. What I mean by that, suppose I store three at this position. I'm taking four slots here and maybe I'm storing seven here. So here I've stored seven, here I've stored three. Now to connect seven and three, what I'm going to do is these four slots are going to refer to three and the next four slot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the address of seven. So here, let me store the address of seven. So that means if this is going to be head, we have information about this. If this is going to be tail, we have information about this because we have stored these values. So if I say start with head, we are going to refer to this three. We start with three, we have achieved this value. And then with the help of memory address of the seven stored together with the memory address of three, we can know that this is going to be the address of seven. So what we can do is we can refer to seven here. So that means these values can be stored at any location and we don't have to worry much. Suppose I have stored seven here, then what I can do is I can store the memory address of two. So maybe two is stored here. So here I can store the memory address in these four blocks. I can store the memory address of two. Now here I have stored two. The next is going to be nine. So maybe nine is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the memory address of nine. And this is going to be my nine. And in the next block, I'm going to store the value of none. So that means these are connected with the help of memory address. Here, if you see, we are going to take extra space in array. We can just directly store these four values together. 
but here we are also going to store 3 then the memory address of 7, 7 then the memory address of 2, 2 then the memory address of 9 and keep on following. Because of this flexibility what we have achieved is we can store any element at any position. But remember to store any element we need 8 memory blocks. It is not megabyte, don't confuse it, it is memory block. What we need is 8 memory block to store each element. 4 block is going to refer to our data and then 4 block is going to refer to the next of data dot next. I am also going to talk about one important thing here. Now in future maybe you are going to study about blocks, maybe you are going to work with interview questions and all further important things. So here let me talk about this pointer itself here. So if I'm going to refer this first memory address as head, so if I need to achieve this block, how I'm going to do that? Because we don't have any index like array. I don't know which is one, which is two, which is three. We don't have such thing. So how I'm going to refer to this element? So to do that, I'm going to use this is head. So I'm going to utilize a class. I'm going to define this link list. We are going to do that in future. But if I'm going to refer to this element, I'm going to use head.next. So if I'm calling this node as head, head.value is going to be my head.data or head.value is going to be my 3. Head.next is going to refer to this 7 because this is head and this is next. So we are going to get this 7. So if this is head, this is going to be head.next. And what this will be? This will be head.next.next. Dot next. So head.next.next. Dot next. Dot next. This is tail or we can say this is head, head dot next, head dot next, dot next and this is again dot next. So I'm giving you a basic idea how we can achieve this. There will be few other things that we are going to do during interview question but this was a base true idea how we are going to work with linked list. Now let me get back to this memory canvas because I think I have already confused you a lot. So this was the representation part that how we are going to do that. We are going to utilize two important things that is our node and then uh, the value of next. And I hope now you understand how this is going to be stored on memory canvas. Don't worry we are going to talk about this a lot again. I hope you understand about this representation. If not make sure you take a notebook, draw it yourself and understand it again. Now let's talk about this type. Now there are two type of link list. The first one is singly link list. And the second one is doubly. So in singly linked list what we usually do is this is the example that we were referring to. We have this 3 then dot next. We have this 7 dot next and we are flowing with a pattern of left to right. But in doubly linked list we also contain the data of previous node. Let me take a representation for you. Now this is a quick example about doubly linked list. So here we are going to store information about the previous as well as the next node. So if I talk about singly linked list, we had this type of node structure, we have this data and this dot next. Now in doubly linked list, what we are going to do is we are also going to have information about the previous node. So if we have to go to next or previous node, we can do that. So let's take the same example where we have three, then we have seven, then we have two and then we have nine. So what we are going to do is first we are going to change this element into a node. So we are going to have this node and now this node is going to have three points which is the previous node, the data or the value you can say or the next node. You can visualize it or you can utilize this diagram. So we have this previous node, we have this data, we have this next node and this is going to be the example. So if I take this particular example we are going to have none here. Why? Because we are starting with head that is going to be our first node structure that is going to be our first node. Head is going to have a value of 3 and the next node we are going to refer is 7. Now head is also going to refer to a previous value. If we don't have any previous node that means the value is going to refer as none. Now let me jump on to head.next which is going to be this 7. Now if I jump back here. Now this is going to have a value of 7. If I talk about the previous node, it is going to refer to this 3 which is head node. And if I talk about the next node, it is going to refer to this 2 which is the next node. If I jump back here, now if I talk about this 2, this is the value, this is the previous node, this is the next node and keep on following. 
So if I refer to head, this is going to be my first node. If I refer to tail, this is going to be my last node. And in last node, what is going to be the next? It is going to be none. So that's how we can mainly determine the first as well as last node. The first node head.prev is referred to none because there is no previous element. And for tail, we don't have any next element. So we are going to refer to none. So this was the basic concept that you have to understand about this double link list. Everything remains same. We can also flow from right to left. In single link list, we only have flexibility to go from left to right because if I reach to this seven, I cannot go back to this three. Or if I reach to this two, I cannot go back to this seven because I don't have any information. But here, if I talk about this double link list, I have information. Suppose I am at this two, I know this previous element is seven. I can go back here because I have this memory address. Go back here. If I am on seven, I can go to two itself. I can go to three itself. So I can go from left to right as well as right to left. So this is pretty important. Make sure you take care about these arrows. So this is three. It is going to refer to seven from this node. If we go back, we can refer to three. That's how it is going to work with different examples. You will get used to it. Now, this was the basic thing that is about representation. That is about type. The major thing that comes into play is always going to be the memory canvas that we are using for you visualization in coding interview. Mostly no one is going to ask you about this, but if you know about this information, I'm pretty sure that it is going to work for you pretty well to understand things. You don't have to depend on anything else. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss about this particular example again, how we are going to store and then let us jump onto the complexities that is access search insert as well as delete. So what I'm going to do is the, let me quickly talk about one more representation form that we are going to utilize mainly in books or notebooks and then jump onto this memory canvas again. Now, if you see this information about this three, seven, two and nine, there is one other way to represent these information uh, that is going to be important for you if you're working with or if you're reading with uh, any university or any book. So what will usually happen is we know that this is singly linked list. So instructor or book usually use a diagram or a representation in this form. So this is going to be three. It is going to refer to seven. Then it is going to refer to two and it is going to refer to nine and this is done. So this is also the correct information. If you see this type of diagram, that means it's a singly linked list with a value of three, seven, two and nine. And this is the value that is three and the dot next will be it's seven. And the first element is going to be head. The last is going to be tail. Now this part is pretty important because you will see these type of diagram. If I jump back here on my doubly linked list format, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this three, uh, this seven, this two and this nine. Here what is going to happen is we are going to have double flowing arrows. So I hope you got this point. Now let us take this example and understand this in the form of memory canvas again. So suppose I have these values 3, 7, 2 and 9. Now at this point of time, this is linked list. But let us also take this example in the form of array. So suppose we have this 3, 7, 2 and 9 in array. How we are going to store is the first thing we are going to do is we are going to find memory slot. So each element is going to take four slot and they are in sequence. That means we are going to take four into four, which is 16 memory slot together. And suppose we got our 16 memory slot. So what we are going to do is I'm going to first store this three. So suppose I got this slot. I'm going to first store this three at six zero one. Then after this four slot, I'm going to store this seven. That's done. After that, I'm going to store this two. That's done and then nine. So that means if I find the six zero one, I can reach to any element because I just need to do plus four plus four and it depends how many times I need to do plus four. If I'm searching for zeroth element, I don't need to do plus four. It will be zero into four. If I'm going to find the first element, that means I'm going to do one time plus four. So six zero one, then six zero five. Maybe I need to do this fourth element that is third index. So it will be three into four. So that will be six zero one and I need to reach this six one three. 
So that's how we are going to do with arrays and I hope by now you have proper information. But what about this linked list? So let me clean this up. So the first thing we already know about this node structure is it is going to store value and then it is going to have other information like dot next. So that means it is going to take four slots for my value and another four slots for my this particular data which is dot next. So each node it is going to take eight slot and then we can store this information anywhere because it is going to be stay connected and it doesn't matter in which sequence we are storing we can store anywhere once we get eight slots together. For same we are going to follow something similar we are going to need eight slots here and same we are going to follow for all of these. Now the first thing we need to understand is we need these eight slots together. And the second thing is we are going to stay connected because of this next. So suppose I have some roadblocks. Uh, this space is already occupied because of some other process in my system. And maybe this space is also occupied. And maybe this space is also occupied. So if you ask me to store this three, seven, two and nine with the help of array, it is not possible because we don't have 16 slots together. And that's where linked list is going to play a pretty good role. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to store this three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find any place. Uh, maybe let's store this three at last. So I'm going to store this three. That's done. Now I'm going to find next eight slot. So remember I'm going to take this eight slot completely because we have this three. Now it is going to store three dot next. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to store this seven. So maybe I'm going to store seven here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this with seven. So the simplest thing I can do is I can store the memory address of this 617 here. So in simple words, we have stored this three and then here we have stored the information of seven. Now here we have seven and Maybe to store this two, we need eight slot. Maybe we can take these eight slot together. From six to nine to six, three, six. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first store this two. And here I'm going to store the next address. So this is seven and this is going to be the address of next two. This is two and this is going to be the next, which is nine. And suppose this is nine, then it is going to be the none. Now this is going to be pretty easy. Suppose uh, this is going to be our three. So if I need to reach anywhere, the first thing I'm going to do is first I'm going to reach my three. Then I know what is the next element, which is seven. I'm going to jump on to seven. Here I have visited seven. Then the next element is going to be two. This is the memory address of two. Once I reach two and this is going to be the memory address of nine. Once I reach nine, this is going to be the memory address of none. That's done. So that means we have a particular sequence. I know this is looking like a canvas for drawing, but I hope you understand that how we are going to utilize this. The first thing I strongly recommend is to just clear this up, take a notebook and draw it yourself. At this point of time, you might be confused because we are taking this bulky four slot. Now suppose this single slot is equals to four slot. And if I need to define this again, what we are simply doing is here suppose I have stored this three and maybe here I have stored this seven maybe here I have stored this two and maybe here I have stored this nine. Remember I am taking each slot as four slot to define everything pretty easily. So this is going to store our three and then here I am going to store the memory address of seven. Now this is seven this is going to be seven and then this is going to be the memory address of two. This, this is proper eight slot. Now this is two, this is going to be the memory address of nine. This is nine, this is going to be the memory address of none. So you can visualize that I have stored everything anywhere and I don't have any sequence. So I just jump onto three, this is going to be the memory address of seven, jump onto seven, memory address of two. So that's how it is going to work. Now three is stored in head, so that is easy. But the problem is with array, I can just do index position. I can go to zero, one, two, three. I know the sequence. I know a pattern. 
But if I talk about this case, I cannot do that. If you say go to index position five or maybe go to index position two in this case, or maybe one, I don't know about that. For what I have to do is I have to start from three. So I need to reach this position, take the value of this memory address of seven, reach here and then find the value. Or maybe if you say find the last element. So what I have to do is I have to reach here, then reach seven, then reach two, then reach nine. At this point of time, I'm storing this information in a tail. But if I talk about this second last element, I have to follow the same. So this is going to be a problem. And we are going to discuss about this in next lecture when we start with complexities. I hope this memory canvas thing is done. Now you have proper information about linked lists. So in the next lecture, let us discuss about the complexities. And that's all. You will be clear with all the concept of linked list. Thank you for following this lecture. See you in the next one.